Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about glomerulonephritis and the different types. The glomeruli are the functional units of the kidneys. Glomerulonephritis, which people know as nephritic syndrome, is caused by inflammation to the glomerulus that results in microscopic or macroscopic hematuria, proteinuria, leukocytouria, without evidence of infection, and so it is sterile, as well as hypertension. Other features include acute kidney injury from inflammation, and depending on the etiology, you can get extra renal involvement such as a rash and arthralgia, or even alveolar hemorrhage. It can be caused by a variety of conditions, including autoimmune, hereditary, and infectious diseases. Glomerulonephritis is not nephrotic syndrome. Inflammation of the glomerulus causes glomerulonephritis, nephritic syndrome, and this damages the glomerular capillary. The porous basement membrane allows red blood cells to leak out, resulting in hematuria. The red blood cells can stick together in the renal tubule, forming red blood cell casts. Red blood cells that pass through the casts and tubules can become dysmorphic red blood cells called acanthocytes. The damaged podocytes, which normally prevent proteins to leak, causes proteinuria typically less than 3.5 grams in 24 hours. Due to inflammation in the glomerulus, white blood cells such as neutrophils are usually recruited to the area and can also leak through the capillaries causing pyuria, which is sterile because there is no infection. It's sterile pyuria. The inflammation that occurs in the glomerulus reduces the uh, glomerular filtration rate, reducing fluid passing through, causing oligouria, and also causing an acute kidney injury with elevated creatinine. Further, the inflammation causes azotemia, retention of urea. Reduced glomerular filtration rate will stimulate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, resulting in hypertension. Uh, and this is from sodium and water retention. Cutting a cross-section of the head of the nephron and the glomerulus, it's important to appreciate um, the surrounding normal architecture. Parietal cells house the Bowman space, which is where we find the glomerular capillaries, which are surrounded by the basement membrane. Around the basement membrane are the podocytes and its foot projections, which normally prevent proteins from leaking out. Here is the Bowman space where things are filtered into from the capillary. Mesangial cells can be found in the intercapillary spaces and have a role in regulating the glomerular filtration rate as well as phagocytosis and promoting inflammation. There are many causes of glomerulonephritis and it can be part of a spectrum. If protein urea exceeds 3.5 grams in 24 hours, there is a nephrotic component to it. Different causes of glomerulonephritis, and what I mean is specifically nephritic syndrome, include rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease, also known as good pasture syndrome, anchor associated glomerulonephritis or vasculitis, immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis, which includes IgA nephropathy, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, and lupus nephritis. And finally, another cause is membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Let us look at each of these in a bit more detail, beginning with the most serious or severe form of glomerulonephritis, which is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, which is uh, chrysenteric glomerulonephritis, it's actually not a disease in itself, but it's caused by other glomerulonephritic diseases, such as 
anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease or good pastures, anchor associated glomerular nephritis, and immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis. Rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis is characterized by loss of glomerular filtration rate of at least 50% and pathological findings of extensive glomerular crescents. Crescents are formed after rupturing of a glomerular capillary wall, leading to accumulation of macrophages, fibroblasts, and epithelial cells and fibrin within the Bowman space. And this leads to the chrysanteric picture seen on microscopy. As you can see, rupturing of the capillary walls will lead to accumulation of many cells in the Bowman space. Inflammation in the area and cytokines released promotes proliferation of the parietal cells. This signifies severe injury. Treatment of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis is dependent on the disease cause. Next, let's talk about anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, also known as good pastures disease. Good pastures disease is a disorder in which circulating antibodies uh, are directed against an antigen intrinsic to the glomerular basement membrane in the kidneys. As a result, this will present with acute or rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis that is typically associated with crescent formation. Most, up to 90% of patients with good pastures disease, present with clinical features of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis. The principal target for the anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies is the NC1 domain of the alpha-3 chain of type 4 collagen, which is highly expressed in the glomerular basement membrane of the kidneys as well as the alveoli of the lungs. Antibodies can also target uh, the alpha-5 chain, which are also common you get linear deposition of these antibodies along the glomerular basement membrane on immunofluorescence. The anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies are also directed against glomerular basement membrane found in the alveoli, as mentioned. So as a result, approximately 40 to 60% can present with con concomitant alveolar hemorrhage and a small proportion of patients may present with isolated pulmonary findings. The treatment for anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, or good pastures disease, include plasmapheresis to remove the antibodies, pulse corticosteroids intravenously and then orals, as well as cyclophosphamide, which is an immunosuppressive agent. The next glomerular nephritis is the anchor associated vasculitis, which causes a horsey immune necrotizing and crescenteric glomerular nephritis. Now, these are big words, but essentially, this category refers to a type of glomerular nephritis in which there are few or no immune deposits by immunofluorescence or electron microscopy. Interestingly, ANCA-associated vasculitis account for the majority of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis cases. ANCA stands for anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody, and these are antibodies that are produced by plasma cells which target proteins within neutrophil granules and monocyte lysosomes. Two antibodies are produced, P-ANCA against myeloperoxidase and C-ANCA against neutrophil proteinase 3. p anca activates neutrophilic granules and c anca can activate macrophage and monocyte lysosome function as well as neutrophils. Activation of macrophages and neutrophils 
results in renal vasculitis. The majority of patients with renal limited vasculitis are ANCA positive, and many have or will develop the systemic symptoms of granulomatosis with polyangitis or microscopic polyangitis. Anchor associated glomerulonephritis is characterized by a prodrome of malaise, arthralgia, myalgia, and flu-like symptoms, as well as acute kidney injury. As mentioned, ANCA uh, autoantibodies will activate neutrophils, and this allows the extravasation of the neutrophils out of the glomerular capillary. The neutrophils will infiltrate the area, resulting in acute inflammation and necrosis. Monocytes begin to infiltrate the area as second line, and over time, the infl inflammatory process will cause a chronic change. Uh, involving scarring and fibrosis. Important key point about ANCA-associated uh, vasculitis or glomerulonephritis is that there is no immune deposition on immunofluorescence. Treatment of ANCA-associated uh, glomerulonephritis includes induction treatment involving steroids and rituximab or cyclophosphamide. This is followed by maintenance therapy with azathioprine, mycophenolate, or rituximab for at least 12 months after stable remission has been achieved. Unlike ANCA-associated glomerulonephritis, which have no immune complex deposition or deposition on immunofluorescence, immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis does. So this is the next type of glomerulonephritis. Immune complex uh, glomerulonephritis refers to the presence of immune deposits in the glomeruli for whatever cause. In most cases, the serologic and histological findings will point to the underlying disease. You have three main types, really. IgA nephropathy, where you can see mesangial and glomerular capillary wall immunoglobulin A deposition. The second is type is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And here there are deposition of immune complexes forming subepithelial humps. And there is also presence, obviously, of anti-streptococcal antibodies in the blood. The third type of immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis is lupus nephritis. And in lupus nephritis, you have presence of anti-nuclear antibodies, and you have what's called a full house immunofluorescence staining. And this involves staining for basically a lot of immune things such as IgG, IgA, IgM, C3, and C1Q. Deposition can be seen in the mesangium, subendothelial, and subepithelial. In summary, the pathophysiology of immune complex glomerulonephritis involves immune complex deposition into the glomerulus, and this will activate the classic complement pathway, resulting in inflammation. For this reason, most immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis are associated with low levels of C3 and C4. IgA is an exception. Immune complex glomerulonephritis will be discussed in more detail in a separate video, and you can click on the link below for that. The final type of glomerulonephritis is membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. And membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis is not a disease in itself, but it's actually a pattern of injury seen in glomerulonephritis as well as in nephrotic syndrome. It's important to remember that membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis has both nephritic and nephrotic pictures. It is diagnosed based on kidney biopsy, 
with renal kidney histopathology demonstrating mesangial expansion, thick basement membrane, and a characteristic tram track finding with a double contour of the glomerular basement membrane. Membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis can be classified into two main types, immune complex mediated membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis and complement mediated membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis. In the immune complex mediated uh, membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis, these guys can either be uh, from a primary cause, also known as an idiopathic cause, or secondary to an infection, autoimmune disease, as well as paraproteinemia. The immune complex that deposit in this area will activate complement uh, response. Complement activation occurs via the classical pathway and is typically manifested by a normal or mildly decreased serum C3 concentration and a low serum C4 concentration. The complement mediated membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis can also be either a primary cause, also known as an idiopathic cause, or genetic causes such as complement dysregulation. The complement mediated membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis activates the alternative pathway directly, which subsequently promotes inflammatory response, resulting in glomerular nephritis. There are usually low serum C3 and normal C4 levels due to activation of the alternate pathway. I will have a separate video that will go into more detail uh, into uh, membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis. So that concludes the video on glomerular nephritis, which is a nephritic syndrome, not a nephrotic syndrome. And again, the main ones we talked about is the rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, which is the most severe end form. It's not a disease in itself, but it's caused by other nephritic conditions. You have good pasture syndrome, also known as anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. You have immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis. We have the anchor-associated uh, glomerular nephritis. And finally, we talked about membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis, which shares both nephritic and nephrotic picture.